Why can't we see this incredible world with the naked eye? Let me explain why. If the eye sees two points coming closer together, when they are about eight thousandths of an inch or two tenths of a millimeter apart, it starts to see them as one point. This is called the resolving power of the eye. If a creature is smaller than the eye's resolution limit, we won't see it, but if we equip the eye with a microscope, we will see it. However, the small size of microorganisms is just the beginning of our challenges. What we see under the microscope will be unusual and hard to understand. Identifying and classifying these tiny creatures can be tricky. In the macro world, if a horse looks like a donkey, they are most likely related. But in the micro world, appearances can be deceiving. Similar-looking microorganisms might not be related at all. To create some beacons in the micro world, let's create a mind map of what you can see under a microscope. Protozoa are a group of unrelated single-celled organisms that have a nucleus. In other respects, protozoa can differ greatly from each other. Most are heterotrophic and can move using various structures like flagella, cilia, and pseudopodia. Microscopic algae are eukaryotes capable of photosynthesis. They contain chlorophyll or other photosynthetic pigments that give them green, yellow, red, or brown colors. Microscopic fungi are eukaryotes. They feed heterotrophically like protozoa. However, unlike protozoa, fungi are immobile, with very rare exceptions. They can be unicellular, like yeast, or multicellular. If the fungi are multicellular, under a microscope we will see hyphae long, branching threads that make up their vegetative body. Bacteria and archaebacteria are domains of unicellular organisms that lack a cell nucleus. They are usually very simple in shape, like spheres or rods. Bacteria and archaebacteria are much smaller than all other microorganisms. You might ask, what about viruses? They are small. They are not visible in a light microscope, only in an electron microscope. They fit the size criteria. But there's one catch. They are not alive. All living beings can reproduce on their own. Viruses cannot. They need to invade a living cell and make it reproduce viral particles. So, they are more like living substances. Therefore, we'll add viruses to the mind map, but they will be in a separate group for those who will gonna be real boys someday. Under the microscope, we can see small but multicellular animals. Microbiologists usually do not study such creatures, but it's good to know how to distinguish them from prokaryotes, microscopic algae, or protozoa. There are also quite curious scenes in the micro world. Do you know what this is? Algae? Bacteria? No, it's a mosquito antenna. A mosquito is certainly not a microorganism, but all living things eventually stop being alive and start breaking down into small pieces, which we can enjoy looking at under the microscope. I sometimes review the scientific works of students submitted for the Olympiad. Once, I came across a picture where a student had meticulously counted the number of bacteria and even performed a statistical analysis. Unfortunately, it turned out to be just debris. I still feel sorry for the effort he put into that ruined work. The easiest way to distinguish debris from living organisms is by its shapelessness. However, sometimes you can find quite neat debris, just as there are quite shapeless microorganisms. Well, now we're better prepared to dive into the micro world. Take a look at who lives there and try to determine which groups they belong to.
write in the comments what topic you'd like the next lecture to be about. All the best and good luck.